everybody, Mac here, and we are into our second video of Wonder May now. What I have here is an oldie but a goodie. This is actually from 2017. This is the Mattel DC Comics Multiverse Wonder Woman. Now, Mattel, it was either last year or in 2018. I'm pretty sure it was last year. It was their last year of having the DC Comics Multiverse license. That license has since been handed over to McFarlane Toys. And his first two figures for the Wonder Woman, um, Wonder Woman 1984 in the DC Comics Multiverse line just released. I just got those. We'll be taking a look at those later in the month. But right now, I want to take a look at this oldie but goodie. And just as a side note, um, it's really disappointing to me that DC, that DC, that Mattel lost the DC Multiverse license. Mattel has, like, zero presence on the action figure shelf right now. This was actually uh, their last hurrah. Supposedly, either later this year or next year, I forget which, they're going to be releasing a new He-Man Masters of the Universe line, which should be very interesting to take a look at. But I really, really liked them competing with Hasbro with the DC Multiverse they released this really great um, Batman 66 Batmobile with an Adam West Batman and a Burt Ward Robin that I missed out on. And now if you find that on the secondary market, it is really expensive. But I found this one. I found Wonder Woman. I wanted to pick her up just for Wonder Month. And I'd actually been wanting this one with the robe, you can see, uh, for a while now. Let me turn the light off so there's no shine. I've been wanting this one with, the, with her robe for a while now. And I decided it was time to pick it up. Now, the box, you have Gal Gadot's likeness down here. You have her on the side. On the back, you see some cross sail with Wonder Woman, Steve Trevor, um, Diana before she became Wonder Woman, and her mother, Hippolyta. And also, the Build-A-Figure, they call it Collect and Connect figure for this, is the War God Ares. And if you take a look at this guy, this is pretty much the version we got in Lego format, if you saw my last video. Which further leads me to believe that either A, this was originally supposed to be the version of Ares that we had in the movie, or B, Warner Brothers distributed this version of Ares to throw people off of what he was really going to look like at the end of the movie, so they didn't spoil. Either way, I really wish we would have gotten this version of Ares over what we had in the movie. In, in, in Wonder Woman 2017, that was really my only only complaint personally with the movie was Ares was just so anticlimactic at the end. But we get Collect and Connect with these four figures and you can see in the box that we get some, what is it, I think we get a, a leg and an arm. Which makes me think I might want to, I might get the other three. Just so I can build up Ares. We'll see. On the top, DC Comics Multiverse. You can see the Wonder Woman logo up top, as well as, where's it at? On the side here. All in all, they did some pretty nice packaging. I like the um, uneven boxing that they gave with it. Also, this writing, this printing down here. I, I tried to find it. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I'm... Is that Greek? Is that Israeli? I don't know. Um, I would love it if somebody knew, if they could tell me in the comments down below. Just just curious. Or if it's just the made-up language of Themyscira, which I thought was Greece, Greece, Greek? Oh, sorry. <laughs> but let's, take a, let's open this box up, take a look at her, and we'll see what we think. Okay, friends, so here we have her Wonder Woman in robe out of the box. Mattel DC Multiverse. Let's see what she has going on. First of all, let's take a look at articulation, starting at the top and we'll work our way down. Her head does articulate. I do believe it's on a ball joint. The head is not removable and there's no, um, there's no additional heads. There's no additional anything that comes with the figure. What you see here is what you get. So the head is on a ball joint and it can, it is capable of doing a full 360, but because the hood piece is so large, the hood piece itself is so large, it, it's kind of a hang up 
whenever you're trying to pose and turn the head. The cape itself is very soft, but the, the hood is very solid. It's all sculpted as part of her head mold. You can even see that her hair underneath and the hood is all one piece. So it can do a full 360 turn, but it's going to be rough and you can hear it squeaking and there's hangups and everything. So I'm not gonna do a full 360 because I'm worried that the paint is going to rub, which you can see a little bit is rubbing right there on her neck. I can't figure out if that's from the hood or from her baldric here. Going down to the arms, she does have ball joints on the shoulders and they do a full 360 spin on both sides. Now, with this figure, it seems like one side of her, her right side is loose, and her left side is very stiff. The, the joints aren't uniform. She has, she has bicep swivel, as well as elbow swivel, and she swivels at the wrists, full 360 spin on the wrists, and single jointed elbows. Moving down, she has a torso twist, as you can see, and that will spin all the way around as well. No ab crunch though, just the pivot. Coming down to the legs, there's no ball joints, it's more like an H joint. She can't really do the splits, but truthfully with this robe on, she wasn't going to anyway. Her legs do pivot backwards and forwards, once again the robe is hindering her movement. Come out that far. And if she didn't have the robe on, they could move back about that far. Swivel at the thigh. Single jointed knees. Once again, very stiff on this side. Very not on the right side. And we have an ankle pivot. Once again, that's really stiff. I don't know if you can hear. I don't know if you can hear that clicking. That's not a ratchet. That's just how stiff it is. But then the right side moves very fluidly. No side to side pivot, just front and back. Paint deco. Well, first of all, let's start with the face. This is obviously before 3D printing, I think became the norm or before somebody else was doing it other than Hasbro, that this is a very decent likeness of Gal Gadot. Not perfect, but it's very, very close. The paint deco on her eyes, though, she looks like she has a lazy eye right here. The left eye looks like it's looking where it should be going. The right eye looks like it's kind of drifting off to the side. That's probably just the paint app on mine. I'm sure they're not all the same. We've seen this before. Action figure eyes can be really hit or miss. As far as the torso goes, I love the coloring of her armor. I love the bright coloring. With Batman v Superman, whether it was the multiverse line or whether it was Lego, her armor was much darker in color, I believe. Batman v Superman was darker in general. The tone of the movie, the color palette, the toys. This is much brighter, matching up with her 2017 movie. And the boots, the boots are painted very well as well. The paint app down here on her ankles, though, where the straps are. You can see some flaking happening already, at least on that one side. And I understand this is an old figure and it's been in storage for a while, but it hasn't been opened. So this is pretty much how the paint app was applied. That's a little bit of a bummer. It's nothing, it's nothing that kills the figure for me. It's just a little bit of a bummer. On her wrists, I like how we have the leather wraps that she had around her hands. I really like that touch. And we have her bracelets, her gauntlets rather. They did a really good job with the silver and gold on here. Once again, the paint app is a little rough right there. You lose some of its shine. You can see the straps underneath. All in all, I really like the paint deco on this figure. The cape, or the robe rather, let me get the arms out of the way. The robe is actually very soft, very pliable, but it's also very heavy. It's almost like if they would have just made this a molded cape and made it part of the body, it might have been lighter. But because this is a much heavier rubber, she is a little bit hard to pose as she's a little back heavy. The cape wants to keep dropping her back. <clears throat> as far as accessories go, she has two. We saw this in the box, the God Slayer. And truthfully, for the size of this sword, I think they did an excellent job on the sculpt 
of mimicking the sword from the movie. I think this is a really good sculpt. I think this looks good. This is a great piece to have. Um, and I was surprised that underneath the rope, because I didn't see this in the box, that she does have this loop to sheathe her sword. Also, I didn't know, because it was underneath the robe on the box, is she does have her golden lasso. If you pop this peg out, you can see there's a little peg right there, and then the lasso just comes off. Now, it stays wrapped. You can't unfurl it. You can't unwrap it. So all we have is this, which means you're not going to be able to get any, like, real lassoing poses out of her. But she can hold it in her hand. She can pose with it. Just nothing horribly, dy or terribly dynamic. Now, you just drape it back on. Then you push that little peg back in, and her lasso's in place. And then you can take the God Slayer, and you can sheathe it on her baldric here. And I like when they do that. I like when you can take, and if you stand it straight up, you can tuck it underneath and never know that she has it. I like that. I like whenever you can actually stash all of the accessories on the figure. I was... I was concerned that you weren't going to be able to sheath the sword on her and it was just going to have to kind of sit there if you didn't want her holding it. Now, she doesn't have pegs on the bottom, so there's no way to peg her to a, um, to a stand. So that's an issue. Also, because of how thick her waist is, because of the robe, a typical, a clamp style stand won't hold her either. You might be able to get away with one of the cradles it would just cradle her in the crotch. I don't know. But posing her, posing her is a little bit of a trick because like I said, the cape does want to weigh her back. Also because of how stiff the cape is, even though you saw I was able to bend and twist it, posing her, the cape is very much, very much hampers her posing. So there's not a whole lot of dynamic poses that you're going to get out of her. All in all, I think she's a great figure to have. I'm really glad I picked her up because this is very unique with the robe style. The non-robed version of her, there were two non-robed versions of her with this armor on. One came from Batman v Superman. The other one is one that came with this line later. It was not part of the original four. It was an exclusive. I forget who it was exclusive to, but that one, the exclusive one, you get a shield for Ares that you don't get with the regular four. You also get... Um, well, you, you get the, the uncaped version of Wonder Woman, but because she's exclusive on the secondary market right now, she's running like 50 bucks. And I'm not sure I want to spend that much money on that figure. Especially when we have McFarlane's new ones coming down the line. So I'm probably going to store her back in her box right here. I'm probably going to keep her in the box and display her that way. Since she's just going to fall over, I feel like if I put her on the shelf... She's going to fall over every time I walk by her. So I'm going to put her back in the box. I'm going to display her in the box. I am glad I have her. She may not be for everybody. She should definitely, or she probably definitely is on any um, Wonder Woman collector's list just because of how unique she is. But for action figure collectors, I can understand why they may make a pass on this one because it's not unique enough to appeal to every collector. And it's not very posable, which is something that I know most collectors want. How dynamic of a pose can we get out of it? So that's what I have for you today. Coming up next, we should be having another blind bag opening for the LEGO Series 20 blind bags. We'll also be having more figures to take a look at, more, um, more Wonder Woman to take a look at throughout Wonder May. So, play well everyone, stay safe, and as always, thank you for watching.